AVC Jeff back again. Um, yeah, just been busy uh, doing other stuff, whatever. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. But uh, yeah, get, get a ton of um, pre-orders coming in. Um, still got a couple outstanding, and a uh, lot of new acquisitions. Um, I just haven't had as much time like dedicated to listening, so that's kind of where I've been. Um, but yeah, I, I did a big, long, I was kind of, I'm obviously kind of sick, so, uh, so yeah, so <coughs> kind of chilled and just listened to music yesterday, so I got, got quite the stack of going right now. So uh, let's just jump in, um, some CDs, but mostly vinyl here. Um, uh, I think most of this is new acquisitions, some of the new titles. Um, so this is uh, Pierre Schaeffer, I don't know, French. Uh, Pierre Henry uh, Symphony Pon Un Home Azul, something like that. Uh, and it's all on the B side, it's Concerto de Ambiguous by Pierre Henry. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so both uh, examples, uh, pretty good examples of uh, music concrete. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, Schaefer is kind of. Um, known to be like one of the first musicians to be using tape loops. Um, so the compositions here are from like 1950, um, actually both of them are from 1950 according to this. But I think the recording on the first one is from 72 I think. So yeah, he's definitely using a lot of um, samples and stuff on it which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, kind of like that minimalistic, uh, I don't know if I'd call it damn yet, but like kind of that minimalistic music. Um, very experimental stuff. Uh, is this one essential? I don't know. It got a repress, but uh, for the same price as the repress, I was able to get the original French copy. So yeah, it's probably VG Plus. It, it needs a cleaning. It's got it's got some little Rice Krispies, but it does look it looks near mint, but it has got some Rice Krispies, which I think is just a cleaning. I hope. But um, yeah, you, you can get the original copies um, if you get lucky for the same price as the repress. So yeah, up, up to you which way you want to go if you're interested in that. Um, I don't. I, I. It's gonna take another listen or two. I'm. I'm somewhere around three and a half and a four on that right now. But um. Yeah. It's like I don't know. You. You can get the repress or the originals for like twenty ish, give or take. Uh, this was one of the purchases I got from uh, Dom's last uh, online sale. So we few few. I guess it would be few in Japanese. Um, a Japanese artist. Uh, she started out with the Japanese punk band um, Aunt Sally, which is, she shows up in the VC every once in a while. It's, that's definitely not um, one of those. The Japanese punk is a little weird, at least the early Japanese punk. Um, it was like, yeah, they didn't. Uh, it was hard for them to get the music in, so they, they kind of went more with the image than the sound. So the sound's like, I don't know. They, Part, um, part prog, part uh, <laughs> power pop. Personally, I don't know. The early Japanese punk uh, didn't get an edge for a couple of years. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I like Aunt Sally though. It's 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 kind of like uh, J-pop crossed with um, new wave or something. I don't know. It's weird. Um, but yeah, this is uh, th this was like her. Um, she went solo after the fact. She did, did some um, kind of synth poppy stuff with uh, Zeruchi Sakamoto, or his name is. Um, but yeah, this one's definitely in like very much in the, the drone experimental kind of uh, reign of things. Um, I, I like this a lot more than the um, the other one she did like uh, like a few years after this. Uh, this yeah, so this one it's it's all like a drone. Um, it's got pretty decent uh, rhythm going on it, so. This one I think would be kind of uh, pretty accessible for most people. Um, this is also available on CD or uh, the original version was CD. There was a tape version, and then um, this is the repress from a couple years ago. So yep. So thank you, Dom, for the uh, the good price on that. Um, yeah, really digging this one. That's a, like a four and a half. I'm surprised you didn't keep that one. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. You don't show that much drone, so that could be the reason. Another one I got from Dom. Um, Stephen David, uh, I'm gonna screw this up. Heat, heat copter, I guess. Um, so I guess I can take the price tag off there. Uh, so this is a repress. The original was like seventy-two, but it was um, from reading the liner notes. I guess they're only like a couple hundred survived because 
guess he didn't pay for them or something. I don't know. So this was the remaster from, I think it was around 2010-ish. Uh, and then I think there's a slightly newer reissue as well. Um, so it's like Outsider um, Psych. <laughs> Uh, so apparently, yeah, the guy, the guy was, I think he was originally, like, the drummer for, the, like, the, was it the Roadrunners or whatever, uh, back in, like, the 50s, 60s, say, I want to say early 60s, um, but yeah, I guess he dropped away too much, uh, acid or something, uh, he, he was pretty far gone by the time this came around, uh, there's not a lot of, uh, documentation who, who actually, according to the liner notes, who actually, like, performed on this other than him, um, but it's, uh, I don't know, um, it's, it's, I think, um, it reminds me a little bit of that, uh, was that Skip Spencer one, but it's, uh, it, this is definitely way out there, and then as they go on, um, it's kind of, especially on the second side, the, the, um, they start, uh, the musicians just start getting really weirded at, yeah, and they, they just start, uh, yeah, playing really sloppy and stuff, it, I, I guess the drugs are kicking in or something, um, I don't know. It's it. I wouldn't pay a lot for this one, but it's it's still a really good <laughs> listen. <laughs> um, it's hard to describe, but uh, it's uh, yeah, just poorly recorded. Um, then they, they did salvage some of it. Apparently, I, I guess this sounds a lot better than the original release. Um, but just like kind of you know, just really trippy. Um, the dude was pretty much insane by the time this came out. <laughs> um, but yeah, trippy psychedelic. Um, a little bit of proggy stuff going on there, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it, it's an interesting one. So that's, that's a product, pretty solid four. Um, probably about four and a half on this guy. This is a uh, Ghost self-titled. This is the Japanese band Ghost. Um, space rock or a little little bit of a, like a folk psych thing going on. Um, they embraced, I think, the space rock a little bit more in their subsequent albums. Um, I streamed a lot of them. Um, of, of all of them, I, I do like the first one best, and I think I'm happy with just this one because, like, I had, basically I have that this one, and I got some like stuff to show up on various comps. Um, but yeah, it's so like '90s psychedelia, space rock. So yeah, it's very very much a '90s Japanese fashion gun on there. Um, but uh, this was recently reissued by um, uh, Drag City. Uh, so I pre-ordered this. This came in. Wonderful. It's uh, yeah, it's worth checking out. I'd say. Uh, Ghost self-titled Drag City. Uh, another. Uh, well, I'll show this a while back, but uh, this is the second LP by Gogs, which is um, what's his name? Um, uh, what's the, oh God, I forget his name now. Um, Stephen. Um, let's see, Stephen Seagal. Ty Seagal. <laughs> it's Ty Seagal with um, Michael Anderson. Chris Shaw and Chris Mutart. Yeah, it, it's a it's a single disker, but it is a, it's a game full for what it's worth. Um, kind of cool packaging though. Um, so I guess it's called Pre Strike Sweep LP number two. Um, so if you, you know Tysicle, this is one of the more heart and heavier of his um, albums. Uh, that sounds appealing to you. It's worth checking out. Um, I'd go at least a four on this. Three, four, four and a half. It depends. Like uh, I don't know. Yeah, every once in a while, you got to throw some Ty Seagal on. Yeah, this, this is a classic. Uh, I showed this before. Um, this is the pink vinyl version. It's like bright pink, like that. So if you see the pink, it's that color. So much, <laughs> not much to see otherwise. Um, actually, I got tickets to see them with Unwound uh, coming up, so I'm pretty excited about that. So Cherubs, Heroin Men, um, some pretty, uh, pretty intense uh, noise rock there. Uh, definitely not for everyone, but that that's a classic album, uh, Five All Day Long. Uh, yeah, I think it's time to file this one away, one away so I just, uh, threw this on. Um, X with Tom Cora. I think I'm going to need to pick up some more Tom Cora, actually. Uh, so maybe some of the stuff with uh, Curlew or something. Um, I'd really dig Curlew, but uh, I'm, I'm betting they're a lot better. The early stuff's a lot better with him. But, um, yeah. So X, early, yeah, industrial. And like Tom Cora, um... Uh, electric, uh, I guess he's playing viola or something. Um, so, not, again, not a, never, for everyone album, but I really, really like this one. I know this was the Sean recommendation. So, um, the vinyl's uh, not that much more than the CD, so I don't know, I, I just splurged a little bit on the vinyl. 
Um, oh, another uh, purchase from uh, Dom. Um, original press, I believe. Or it's, or it's this really early second press. Um, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't figure out from Discogs. I think this would be considered the first pressing. So, uh, Girls at Our Best. And it says, uh, with the first 10,000 copies, you get a free pleasure bag. Can't believe they did 10,000 copies of this, but all right. Uh, excellent. Um, I, I don't know. You could lump it in with No Wave. But yeah, post-punk um, slash No Wave. Um, or not No Wave. Uh, new Wave. Um, kind of a little No Wave-y at times, though. Uh, it's a girl, ba um, girl led band. It's like uh, it's, I think it's mostly female vocals, all dudes all the way around. Otherwise, despite the name, uh, but the, yeah, this is a pretty complete one. Um, there's a little tearing on the, the edge, which yeah, I was expecting it a little bit better. Right there. Okay, good enough. Um, but yeah, the the bag was intact, which is cool. Um, so it's basically like like um, puzzles and. Um, what was in there, like some stickers and stuff, I think. So it was kind of cool to see that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if this would appeal to everybody, but I, I really like it. Um, it's the one I'd streamed a bit before. Uh, somewhere between a four and a half and a four. Yeah, this one, um, yeah, finally got a repress. It was previous, it's a bootleg. Uh, this is Haraka no Rosales, aka, um, Liz Rosales de Nudis, um, same man. So, I think it was the bass player, but yeah, one of them uh, was, uh, he basically they, he hijacked a plane with some other ra Japanese radicals and flew to North Korea or something. Um, I guess, I think they were going to somewhere else originally, but they, they ended up in North Korea. Uh, so it was a big thing, so he used it for the uh, the boot uh, cover here. Um, Oburu Topanai Tori wa Mizutani ga Suyo. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I had this on, um, like, I have this on, like, MP3 or whatever. Uh, someone ripped it before, but, um, I, yeah, I, I listen to this a lot. Um, I guess compared to, like, the newer releases, uh, the, the sound quality is not quite there, yeah, even for a bootleg, but, uh, yeah, some cool stuff on this. Um, yeah, so, like, half of these, I think, are, like, show up in other places, but, um, you know what, let's do it on my, I don't know, so I think they come, I'm just noticing something, so some of these, are okay, so some of, <laughs> so track, okay, so a couple of the, okay, so only half of this is original, that's why it sounded familiar, okay. That was like a crappier copy of another bootleg. So track one is taken from Heavier Than Death and Family, and then some of it's from 67, 69, to do it live. And then uh, and, uh, the other half are from uh, Soundboard. So half of these are basically off other boots or official releases and rebooted. That's interesting. I, ne I did not notice the sign print. Okay, so knowing that now, I probably would not recommend this one, but it's one I wanted for a while and I got a repress. Uh, unfortunately, it did get a little beat up uh, in the mail. I don't know if you can see that, but like, the whole bottom got banged up. But whatever. I'm probably not going to sell that for a while anyway, so what? whatever. Um, yeah, I showed this a while back, but I finally got around to really listening to this one again. The first listen, I wasn't that impressed. Second listen, I actually liked it a lot more, so... Uh, Peel Sessions, 91, 90, uh, 2004, PJ Harvey, um, still not as, you know, the, the early 2000s stuff I'm still not like a massive fan of, but it's, uh, it's still pretty good. So, yeah, enjoy this, you know, you know what you're getting, that's, that's a pretty solid four. Um, if you like the, the, the demos and all that, it's in that same vein. Um, sorry, man, <sighs> it's really stuffed up today. Then, uh, yeah, this was a pre-order from a while back, um, Hyper Gals Pure, I, it's not on Discogs, I added this CD to Discogs, but, um, uh, I could not find the other releases on Discogs, uh, they, there is a, this is their second album, um, unfortunately they didn't reproduce all the artwork on the, this version, um, there should be some photos and, like, a, maybe a little booklet, which they didn't reproduce, which is disappointing, um, but yeah, there is a, in Japan, there is a um, final version, but 
yeah, it's, it's an, one, it's not on Discogs, and two, like, you're going to have to go on Japanese sites to kind of hunt it down, um, or go into some shops, so, and yeah, next time I'm in Japan, maybe I'll, I'll do a little digging, I'll see if I can find their other, um, their first album, or, um, their, they, I guess they have a third album coming out very soon, which I'm guessing Skin Grafts all over, um, again, this one's not for everyone, it's, um, if you know Milt Banana, it's pretty much in that vein, um, so, uh, two, it's a duo, um, two Japanese girls, um, art students, I believe, <laughs> typically are, um, yeah, so, like, basically, just, a uh, really detuned lo-fi, um, drum machine, and girls screaming in your face, um, very hyper, <laughs> that's the name, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty intense, so, if you, if you're a fan of Melt Banana, you probably like this, but, uh, yes, uh, Steve, if you're watching, don't get this one. You probably won't like it. Uh, this one was really good, though. Um, this does have a vinyl uh, version, which you can probably still pick up. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. It's an official release, so I'm sure it'll get more pressings. Uh, Les Rizales de Nudes, uh, Boss 93. Uh, this is the CD version. Um, if you get the CD version, which is also slightly cheaper than the vinyl, it comes with a DVD. I have not watched the DVD, but I thought it would be cool to have the DVD. You know, I've been buying so much Les Rizales of the last couple years, i just like, yeah, I've, I've got enough on vinyl. So, um, yeah, it's uh, the one that came out right before this. Um, uh, was it Cita 93? I think it's the better one, but um, but I, I kind of wanted the DVD, so, so I, I got this. Uh, I think this I think this is actually harder to get than the um, the vinyl version, but uh, the vinyl is a double disc. This is a you know, single disc plus the DVD. So uh, Bahas 93, uh, this is their uh, reunion from 93. They've been um, on hiatus for like five years or more at this point. Um, so, yeah, Japanese, in your face, uh, psych, with a lot of feedback, um, you know what you're getting at this point. Um, so it's, it, it, it was a DAC recording, um, it was a boot, but it was remixed by, uh, I forget who, um, who was on here. I don't think he actually was on the recording, but it was one of the later members of, um, Liz Rosales remixed it, it probably says on here. But, um, it doesn't say, but yeah, in the liner notes, or something, it does come up liner notes. Um, it does say you remixed it or whatever, but, um, yeah, so it's official release. It sounds pretty good, even though it was a boot, but it was a digital boot, and then they remixed it to make it sound, like, proper, not, like, thin. I think they did that with the other, uh, 93s. They said the early, uh, DAC tapes, or DAT tapes were, um, yeah, really thin sounding. Yep, and then uh, this was, I got on Sean's recommendation, uh, Cure Disintegration, uh, this is the three-disker, um, so it has, uh, disc one's the original album, um, I don't know if the mix is the best, uh, supposedly this was remixed by Robert Smith or something for the, um, the, the sticker that was on it, and then, um, yeah, you can still get these new from Europe, um, that is all the demos, which, Curiously had a um, cover of uh, what's her name, the folk uh, singer, um, the one, the one Steve hates actually. Uh, what's her name? I, I don't remember it anymore. And then uh, the third disc has Entreat, which was a album from I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. It's like uh, it's like a live perform. Um, uh, no, it was original. Okay, it was original eighty nine. Okay, so it has the original in nineteen eighty nine and treat uh, as the third disc, but it then adds like two or three extra tracks. So yeah, the three disc actually ends up with having like five extra tracks of unreleased stuff uh, plus the you know, you know the demos or whatever. Um, so it was kind of cool. Uh, I good you know if I was going to get this or get the vinyl, I, I if I was going to do it again, I probably would have just gotten the vinyl. Um, but. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. The, the yeah, the entry is kind of cool. Um, and I guess you can get it on vinyl. Um, it, it's pretty close to the album versions actually. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, if I was just gonna get one, I, I would just get the vinyl of the original album done. Anyway, uh, I can't see how long this run. Twenty minutes. I think that's long enough. Um, so I'm gonna sign off. Uh, chill. Listen to a little music. Uh, and uh, get on with my day here. So uh, take care, everyone. Um, yep.
spring is here, I think, so yay. And I am looking forward to getting over this cold. Later.